So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about Martha Euphemia Lofton Haynes, the first African-American woman to earn a PhD in mathematics. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you all a picture of her. And of course, you can, you know, come to your own conclusions, form your own thoughts. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to play the intro. huge fan of common sense I don't think it takes a four-year degree to be able to look at somebody and tell if they're black or not now y'all be trying to overcomplicate it like I look at a woman like this and be like clearly she's not black and y'all like well well do you know anything about genetics I don't think you have to in order to know that this woman is not black quite frankly okay like look at me do you need a degree in genetics to know that I'm not Japanese? Quite clearly, I'm not Japanese. This is not what Japanese people look like, okay? So clearly, I can look at this woman and I can tell you she is not a black woman, okay? Now, let's read <laughs> from her Wikipedia page, all right? Martha Euphemia Lofton Haynes was the first African-American woman to earn a PhD in mathematics, which she earned from the Catholic University of America in 1943. Euphemia Lofton was the first child and only daughter of William S. Lofton, a dentist and a financier, and Lavinia Day Dawson, a kindergarten teacher, okay? So when I read this, I said, hold up. Okay, let's be realistic. Let's be realistic. Because Miss Euphemia was born when? She was born in 1890, okay? So her dad was born sometime prior to that. And he was a dentist. I said, I don't think they was letting a lot of black people be dentists back then. Like, so I said, let me look her parents up. Maybe I'll get lucky and there'll be a picture of her parents and they'll clearly not be black, right? So I went ahead, I Googled her parents. I Googled their names, right? Because their names are listed on Wikipedia. I got lucky with that. Sometimes the names are not listed, right? And I did not come across any pictures. I also then Googled, oh, Euphemia, Lofton Haynes, parents or whatever. Still didn't come across any pictures. But, 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 you know, it did pop up an ancestry record, right? So I clicked on that record, but y'all, I ain't got the, the paid version, whatever that ancestry demands, okay? But then I remembered my mother does. Oh, so I called her. I said, my can you give me your ancestry law again? I'm trying to look at this record, right? So, of course, she don't know her password, don't know the email. She like, it just logs into my stuff automatically when I open the computer. Okay, fair. I don't know half my passwords either. I can't even be mad at that, right? So, then she was like, let me just look up the record for you. I said, duh. Okay, perfect. Okay? So, then I told her the names of these people. And let me tell you what records came up, okay? So, this is from the 1910 census, Okay? So her father is listed as William S. Lofton. His name perfectly matches up with the um, name on Wikipedia. Now, in brackets, it says William S. Gauston. I don't know what that is, right? But then it says his age in 1910 was 45. He was born in 1865. So again, I'm thinking, yeah, how many black folks born in 1865 was being allowed to go to college and become dentists and stuff? I said, that don't really sound like what black folks was going through at the time, right? Now, of course, I'm sure there are exceptions to every rule, but mm, this probably follows the rule, right? So then I continue to read, and then I come across his race, mulatto. Hmm, not black, okay? I said, hmm, hold up now, right? So then I said, okay, well, let's go and let's find the wife in the records as well, right? So the wife is listed as Anna L. Lofton. So at first I was like, who the heck is this? Like, what? But, 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 my mom found another record. I don't know if it was an obituary or something, but it said, oh yeah, Anna Lavinia Lofton. So apparently Lavinia, the name they have listed on Wikipedia is actually her middle name. So on the census, she is listed as Anna L. Lofton. Miss Anna Lofton was born in 1876 in Georgia, and her race is listed as mulatto. Hmm. So I said, hold up. So Miss Euphemia Lofton is apparently the first black American woman to get a PhD in mathematics, but Miss Euphemia Lofton doesn't have not a single black parent. 
How do you get that? How do you get two non-black people getting together to have a kid and somehow the kid is black? That doesn't make any sense, right? So this is the reality that we have to face. At best, Miss Euphemia Lofton was a multi-generationally mixed woman, a mulatto woman who had two mulatto parents, as opposed to being first generation mixed, a mulatto person who has a white parent and a black parent, right? That's our very best case scenario. But at worst, okay, because... Like I said, I couldn't even get into the Ancestry account, right? So I don't know if they document quadroons and octoroons, right? For all I know, they might list anybody with a drop of black as mulatto. Her parents might have been one droppers, right? At the very worst. But I don't know. I don't know. I won't even, I won't even make that assumption, okay? I got to do more research before I can say something like that. But what I will say is this, that on the record... Both of her parents are mulattoes. So there's no way in hell she can possibly be black. Therefore, there is no way in hell she can possibly be the first black woman to get a PhD in mathematics, right? So that raises the question of why are we pushing this narrative? Oh, we're going to get all into that, of course. So let's look at the story that we've been dealt in its entirety, okay? Miss Euphemia Lofton is allegedly the first African-American woman to get a PhD in mathematics. But when you look at her, she looks like a white woman. And according to the census, both of her parents were mulattoes, right? Now, let's get back to what I said about Miss Lofton's father, right? How he was born in 1865 and he was a dentist. Now, realistically, exceptions to every rule exist, okay? Maybe there was somebody who looked like me in 1865 who was also a dentist, right? But realistically, I'm going to tell you right now, most of the black people in 1865 wasn't becoming dentists, right? That's just not the reality of what black people at that time were going through. So first of all, let's acknowledge the fact that black people and people who are listed as mulatto were not going through the same things during slavery or Jim Crow or the Reconstruction era or any of that, right? Because a lot of you all like to sit here and pretend that any of you had it as bad as black people and no, you did not. Now, I'm not saying that you had it well. No, that's not what I'm saying. Like I've mentioned, I went to New Orleans and I went to the Whitney Plantation, which is like an hour outside of New Orleans, right? And they have all these firsthand accounts of the people who were enslaved on that plantation. And one of them was from a, from a mulatto woman. She was like, how can my dad do this to me, right? So I'm not saying y'all had it easy, but what I'm saying is y'all didn't have it like black people because y'all didn't. Now, of course, we can say that Miss Euphemia's dad was also an exception, maybe, right? Maybe he was an exception among mulattoes. Maybe most mulattoes weren't even becoming dentists, right? But realistically, who do you think it would have been easier for in that time period to become a dentist? Somebody who looks like me or somebody who's mulatto and damn near looks white. Come on, let's be for real, right? Again, we like to sit here and pretend that black people and biracials went through the same shit in this country, but we didn't, okay? Now, this is the other thing. This is the other thing. You notice that both of her parents are biracials. And something in me tells me that that just didn't happen to happen because of chance. Y'all can sit here and say, oh, biracials are black. They were pushed into the black community. They went through everything with us, so and so and so. But you notice that biracials were marrying other biracials and having biracial children, right? And you notice that biracials were becoming things like dentists during the Reconstruction era, right? Like, like, come on, let's be for real. Again, nobody's saying that biracials didn't go through anything. That's not what I'm saying, right? But realistically, you notice that biracials quickly became the upper class of the black community, so y'all was going to college and becoming dentists and getting PhDs and mathematics and shit. And this is my thing. This is my thing. Y'all sit here and y'all claim that black people and biracials go through the same shit. Y'all will sit here and say somebody like Euphemia Lofton represents me, right? But you notice that every time somebody says something about the first black person to so-and-so and so, it's usually somebody who is damn near white and <laughs> I guess, you know, listed as biracial on the census, right? Very rarely is it somebody who looks like me. And you all can sit here and again, pretend that black people and biracials and one droppers and shit go through the same things in this country, but we do not. Because it is not by chance that the first black person to do whatever is always a white person or a, a quadroon or a biracial or something. That is not just happening to happen. Now, let me make it clear that I am not knocking Miss Euphemia Lofton. I'm not, first of all, 
I respect anybody who has a PhD. I don't know what the standards were back then to get a PhD, but I know they pretty rigid right now, okay? I respect anybody who has a PhD. And then you telling me you got a PhD back 100 years ago. You were a woman and you were considered mulatto. I'm sure she went through hell, right? So I'm not knocking her or saying she didn't work hard or whatever. But what I'm saying is that black women, actual black women had it worse than her. And that's why we didn't get to be the actual first black woman to get a PhD in mathematics because we were going through a hundred times more than what she was, right? Let's be honest about what is going on here. I feel like people who look like this can be powerful allies to black people if they just be honest. If you sat here and said, Look at me, I'm damn near white, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And look at how I'm treated, right? So imagine what a black person is going through. That could be such a powerful testimony against white supremacy, but instead you sit here and pretend that you black and that we all going through the same thing. Like, I feel like you basically, you upholding white supremacy with that shit because you notice that you're the acceptable form of blackness. The acceptable way to be black is to be white. That's why you get picked. Not because you're smarter than black people or you worked harder than us, but because of your proximity to whiteness. Now let's read about some of the awesome things that Ms. Lofton did for black people. Because even though she wasn't black, she still looked out for us. Thank you, Becky. We appreciate it, okay? She was the valedictorian of M Street High School in, 19, in 1907, excuse me, and then graduated from Normal School for Colored Girls, now known as University of the District of Columbia, with distinction and a degree in education in 1909. She went on to earn an undergraduate mathematics major and psychology minor from Smith College in 1914. In 1917, she married Harold Apple Haynes, a teacher. The couple had no children. Now look up a picture of Harold Apple Haynes. Come on now, come on now, right? Now, what did I mention about these folks being multi-generationally mixed and shit? These people know good and well the privileges that they have over actual black people. That's why they go out there where to marry other mulattoes or other white people. They are, they are well aware of the racial hierarchy and how to climb it, right? And they are willingly doing that shit. But then they'll sit there and tell you, oh, yeah, I just happened to happen. Or, oh, everybody in my family is mulatto. It was just, you know, a coincidence. Like, come on. But anyway, let's continue to read, okay? Haynes contributed quite grandly to the educational system of the District of Columbia. She taught in the public schools of Washington, D.C. for 47 years and in 1966 became the first woman to chair the D.C. Board of Education, on which she served through 1967. While on the D.C. Board of Education, she was an outspoken critic of the track system, which she argued discriminated against African-American students by assigning them to tracks that left them unprepared for college. This work contributed towards the filing of Hobbs and vs. Hansen, which led to the end of the track system in D.C. She taught first grade at Garrison and Garfield schools and mathematics at Armstrong High School. She taught mathematics and served as chair of the math department at Dunbar High School. Haynes was a professor of mathematics at the University of the District of Columbia, where she was the chair of the Division of Mathematics and Business Education, a department she created dedicated to training African-American teachers. Let me again make it clear that I am not knocking Miss Euphemia Lofton. I'm not saying that she didn't go through any form of oppression or that she didn't help black people out or anything. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this was not a black woman and she was afforded privileges that actual black women did not have at that time. That's why she got to be the first black woman, right? Instead of an actual black woman because we were going through added barriers that she was not going through, right? And this is done on purpose. People will sit here and say, for example, that we've had a black president when the president was biracial, right? So we haven't had a black president, but we can sit here and pretend that we have and that the issues that black people face, the unique issues that we face that biracials don't, no longer exist because we've had a black president who was not actually black. Again, do y'all think that biracials are so much more hardworking than black people that they happen to be all of the first blacks? Do y'all think that? Because I don't. I think that this is being done on purpose by design. 